but let's just take the pride and throw it out the window and do what's best for your company. In this video, we're talking about Legacy Automotive partnering with Tesla. Yes, you heard that right. Tesla's North American charging standard, their design for plugging in your EV and charging it up, is being adopted by the big Legacy Automotive companies. Not all of them, but a few of them have gotten on board. Ford, GM, and now Rivian. So let's get into it. I'm Josh West, and this is Josh West 24-7. I'm a 15-year veteran of Legacy Automotive, but now I see that Legacy Automotive is undergoing phenomenal change with the advent of electrification. At first, they resisted Tesla. Now, they have no choice but to partner with them. All right, so by now, most of you know that on May 25th, there was a Twitter Spaces that took place with Ford CEO Jim Farley and Elon Musk, where Jim came on and basically announced that Ford uh, was being first. They were leading the way, not GM, but Ford was leading the way to partner with Tesla on their NACS connector technology, meaning that moving forward, 2024, uh, all new Ford vehicles will have the Tesla connector, not the old CCS, the big, bulky, clunky connector like they have right now. They're all going to go ahead with the sleek Tesla design, which is a great move for Ford. Very, very smart and big kudos to Jim Farley for stepping up and moving forward in the right direction. One of the big problems that these big OEMs have is pride. Uh, for a long time, you know, they always saw Tesla as just like this little guy in the back kind of making noise and everybody was getting all bent out of shape over it and it really kind of irritated them and they never really took Tesla seriously. But now they don't really have a choice uh, because Tesla is growing to be an absolute juggernaut and Tesla is leading the way and has led the way for a long time. It's just that these big OEMs are just finally realizing it now. The Tesla supercharger network being one of those big leadership roles. And so what GM is doing, and Ford, and now Rivian, is partnering with Tesla. Getting back to Jim Farley, uh, one of the things that he announced is that all the Ford electric vehicles up until this point, having had the CCS connector, are going to have a special adapter. It's going to be available through the Ford Parts Distribution Center, and it'll be available to any Lightning or Ford Mach-E or E-Transit owners. So great move on behalf of Ford. But that's not the biggest bit of news. The big bombshell dropped later on in that conversation, which was about 27 minutes, I believe, in length. The big bombshell dropped when Jim Farley let it slip that Ford's going to one pricing setup dictated by the manufacturer in order to try and compete with Tesla and overcome the obstacles of their dealerships adding on all kinds of fees and all kinds of nonsense and undercutting and overcutting and doing all these things that eventually end up hurting Ford in the long run. In fact, this is a problem that all legacy OEMs have. It's just that Ford is the first one to step up and start nipping it in the bud. I personally believe that this is the first big step Ford is taking publicly to eliminating their dealership network. Bottom line, Ford is taking back control of the sales process. They know they have to in order to survive. The dealership network is completely archaic. The whole sales model is completely obsolete. And it's just a matter of time watching it play out as these manufacturers scramble to take back control of the sales process and eventually eliminate their dealership network and rework it so it's not even recognizable from what it is today. So a couple weeks later on June the 8th, General Motors CEO Mary Barra also came on Twitter spaces with Elon Musk, a similar fashion to Jim Farley, but a very different feel and a very different vibe to that conversation. Her entire conversation with Elon lasted less than eight minutes and it felt a little bit more disjointed, I'll, I'll put it lightly. Uh, but she did come on and she did, you gotta give her credit, she did come on and say that General Motors is also adopting Tesla's NACS North American charging standard in General Motors vehicles. Now they are one full year behind Ford. Ford's making that move for 2024 models whereas GM is waiting until 2025. So I don't know if that's some behind the scenes engineering issues or logistics or whatever the case, maybe they're waiting for some new models to come out. But bottom line is General Motors has committed to making the move. They are gonna be rolling out an adapter right away for existing CCS vehicles, I guess for the 2023, 2024 model year and anything previous to that. Now, the big question is, hey, don't we have a big three? We got two of the big three uh, that have moved to the Tesla standard. Where is Stellantis? 
Ram, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler. Guys, <laughs> where are you? All I've seen is headlines saying, oh, we're thinking about it. Thinking about it? Do you want to stay in business or not? That's what you need to be thinking about, Carlos Tavares. This guy does nothing but complain. I mean, he hates the idea that, that his company has to switch to electric vehicles, and he's been very vocal about that. But it's like, buddy, it's time to wake up and take control and realize that Tesla's leading the way, and if you don't start partnering with them, you're just going to get wasted. But the announcement that I was most excited about, I mean, it's great about Ford and it's great about General Motors, but the one I was the most excited about was Rivian. Now, a lot of people don't know, but Rivian and Tesla have butted heads here and there. Um, Rivian has taken a lot of pages out of the Tesla playbook to their credit, because Tesla's doing it the right way, uh, Rivian is selling direct to customers, so they don't have those dealerships in there, adding in all those fees and markups and all kinds of trickery and nonsense, high pressure sales tactics and all that great stuff that we know goes on at the dealerships. Rivian has completely started from scratch. They sell direct, they build a phenomenal product. Everybody that has one of these trucks and SUVs absolutely loves it. They've got their own in-house software development. They do over-the-air software updates and they're building out their own electric vehicle charging network, something none of the other OEMs are doing outside of Tesla. They call it the Adventure Network, which is great because these vehicles are centered towards outdoors enthusiasts and off-roaders and things like that. So they're positioning their charging network in places that will be more accessible to those more remote locations like off-roaders and all that sort of thing and towing trailers and kayaks and all that good stuff. Um, it's really great to see that end of the network being built out and a focus for outdoor enthusiasts. So Rivian's picking up that uh, end of the game. Uh, Jeep and Land Rover, of course, they're nowhere to be found on this. They're completely lost. Uh, have no idea why they haven't uh, begun building out an adventure network of their own, but uh, only time will tell. But kudos to Rivian. Um, yeah, just getting back to the fact that they have butted heads with Tesla because they have taken some talent from Tesla. Um, there was some, uh, you know, a controversy over, um, um, there was some maybe some IP that was taken and switched around and some design things and back and forth. Um, but the great news is that uh, RJ Scaringe, uh, kudos to him, kudos to Elon, putting their differences aside, uh, partnering together. Now, Rivian did not go on Twitter spaces and do their announcement. They just simply announced it on Twitter. They said, hey, we're partnering with Tesla uh, on the supercharger network and our vehicles, I believe 2024 moving forward, are going to use the Tesla NACS uh, connector system rather than the old CCS. And of course, they're going to roll out an adapter as soon as possible uh, in the Rivian online shop, which is great news for all Rivian owners. One thing that I tweeted out as soon as I heard the news, it just went like a light bulb in my, in my mind here, is that the Rivian R1S, which is their family SUV, seven seater, big truck, you know, it's got that boxy look that everybody loves. Now that the Tesla network is opened up for that truck, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm considering getting one. I can tell you that this thing is just going to be a phenomenal seller for families, road trippers, towing the boat to the cottage. It's just going to be a complete game changer for somebody that wants an SUV that maybe it's not as on road or futuristic as the Model X, but they want something that's more trucky and more, you know, kind of boxy and traditional in the SUV field. And I think the Rivian is the perfect truck. I mean, it walks all over any Land Rover, any Jeep, Wagoneer, give me a break. Like these trucks don't even come close. The Rivian is head and shoulders above them all. It's got crazy horsepower, incredible towing, uh, safe performance, massive power front trunk for storage, and a great family vehicle all around with the over-the-air software updates. And the only thing that they were missing with that vehicle was access to the Tesla network, and now they've got it. So to the moon with uh, Rivian R1S sales, I mean, they're going to do exceptionally well with that, and kudos to them. Good job for putting that together, RJ. At the end of the day, it's going to be the best experience for the consumer, and overall, it's going to be a good move for both companies. So I was so happy to see that Tesla and Rivian working together. So the big question is, who's going to be next? Is it going to be Stellantis or are they going to continue to think about it as they develop their new electric Ram REV? Which again, we know it's going to have a massive battery pack. They're talking about a hybrid. They're talking about all these different things. Bottom line is they need to just put their pride aside and move to the Tesla 
connector. It's going to be the best experience for those Ram truck customers, whoever ends up buying one of these trucks, because they're going to be going up against Cybertruck. They're going to be going up against the Rivian R1T, which now has access to that charging network. And again, you're towing your boats, you're towing your cargo trailers, you're using the truck for work, you're running it with a snow plow on the front of it. It's going to use more fuel. Obviously, you're going to want to have a faster, larger charging network for your customers. So it's literally a no brainer. Never mind the fact that Ford's F-150 is going to have full access to all the Tesla network as well. So Ram will literally be shooting themselves, not in the foot, but in the face, if they don't step up and move to the NACS connector. Come on, Stellantis, wake up, let's go. Like, why are you waiting so long already? It's hilarious. Like, it's just becoming a laughing stock. Anyways, I also think that Polestar is going to make the move fairly shortly. I believe they will announce that they're going to adopt the NACS connector. The Polestar 2, I think, is a great car. The 3 looks really nice as well. Polestar 3, uh, I think that's going to be a good seller in its niche. Um, who's another one? Hyundai. We all know that Hyundai has been making big moves in the electric vehicle space with the Ionic lineup, the 5 and the 6. Uh, Kia as well, they've got their big EV9 coming out, which is essentially, you know, an electric Hyundai Palisade. Beautiful truck. I think they're going to do very well. But again, extremely limiting if you don't have the Tesla network. Uh, who's at the bottom of my list? I think Volkswagen is, only because they're, they own the uh, the EA network, which is Electrify America, Electrify Canada, which is all CCS. And you're talking millions of dollars to uh, to add in the Tesla connectors, which eventually, yes, I believe they're going to have to do, but I think they're kind of at the back of the bus. In my opinion, tell me in the comments below, do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think? Who's next? Now you say, well, what about Lucid? Yes, do I think that Lucid should adopt NACS technology? Absolutely right away without a question. Now, Peter Rawlinson has spoken out about it and he said that while well, Lucid is waiting for the network to support um, 1,000 volt uh, charging, which I'm like, okay, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, just relax. Like, take it for what it is. The bottom line is you want to give your customers the best possible experience. This is just a lame excuse. The reality is we all know that Peter Rawlinson used to work for Elon Musk, worked on the Model S. The two of them had butted heads. There was some bad blood there. Again, guys, we got to move this whole transition forward way faster. Let's put a, put, let's just take the pride and throw it out the window and do what's best for your company. Do what's best for your customer. And that is working together. Partnering with Tesla, opening up the supercharger network. I mean, the bottom line is, if Elon and Tesla had not opened the, the charger network, it would make life a whole lot more difficult for these other OEMs. For the Lucids, for the Rivians, the Forge, GMs, Stellantis, whoever, doesn't, doesn't even matter. The reality is there's an incredible opportunity and the companies that wait longer are just going to look even more silly. Eventually, they're going to switch. I mean, that it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. So let's, come on, Peter, if you're watching, like just put the pride aside, have a little slice of humble pie and, and make the move to NACS. So how does this affect legacy automotive dealerships? Of course, that's my background. And so I'd like to give you a little bit of my thoughts here on how I think the legacy OEMs, the GM and Fords, partnering with Tesla, how does that affect the dealership situation? Well, here's what I think. I believe that Tesla partnering with these OEMs is going to send a very clear message to customers. You see, you're going to have the traditional, oh, my daddy bought a Ford and my grandpa had a GM. And so that's why I got to buy GM and that sort of thing. And sure enough, that's enough to bring the customer to the dealership, to the retail situation. But once they encounter the sales staff, who most likely is completely uneducated, who really is not interested in selling the vehicle because it takes so much more effort to learn about it and to educate the customer, because it's such a paradigm shift in how they are maintained, how the vehicle is refueled, the, the entire lifestyle surrounding electric vehicles, the salesperson's just not going to be interested because the bottom line is, historically, 
Again, judging from what we can see, they generally take the path of least resistance. At the end of the day, they're commission-based and all they want is the sale. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna tell you whatever you wanna hear. And the reality is, is that customers that are looking at an electric vehicle, this is not like, oh, it's just the new model of the same you know, Chevy Suburban I've had for the last 10 years and I buy and lease a new one every three, four years. No, this is completely different. They wanna know, what kind of tires are on this thing? What's the rolling resistance? What about aerodynamics? What's the size? of the battery pack why does this vehicle that has a smaller battery pack how does it get more range than this vehicle over here that has a larger battery pack but doesn't get as much range why is that how does that work what's it like for recharging what if i don't have charging at my home what's it like charging on the road what about towing what about winter driving all of these questions that the salespeople may not have a clue how to answer so that's the first hurdle the second hurdle is, uh, no doubt, the salespeople are going to use the fact that Tesla is partnering with GM and Ford and whoever else steps, gets on board. They're going to be like, oh, Mr. Customer, and great news. You know, this Chevy Silverado EV, oh man, you can go to the Tesla supercharger with it. Isn't that great, Mr. Customer? And the customer's going to be like, yeah, that's great, but A, why doesn't GM have a network? We don't know. And B, um, if Tesla's so great, sh shouldn't I be maybe considering Tesla's truck? Don't don't they have a pickup truck? They have a they have a cyber truck, don't they? Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'm going to take a look at the range and the towing and the safety and the performance, the zero to sixty and the capacities and all that sort of thing. And maybe I'll maybe I'll take a look at that. Well, then the Mr. Customer gets home on his computer and he's researching, comparing the the Silverado EV with the cyber truck and realizes, holy crap. This Cybertruck has crazy specs. Okay, it looks a little different. It's kind of weird. You know, it's it's stainless steel. Well, maybe I'll wrap it if I need to make it a color. Okay, fine. Great. But then they got to think, well, uh, what are the details? What, what are, What's involved with actually getting into this truck? And so, of course, they're sitting at their computer and on Tesla's website, heck, you can just order the truck right there. Easy peasy. Don't even have to talk to anybody. And then, well, what about the Chevy truck? Oh, oh, I got to wait till the dealership opens the next morning and, and get in my car and drive there, make a trip there. And then I got to make an appointment. I got to sit down with the salesman. The salesman's going to try and maybe charge some allocation fees or, or market adjustment allowances or, you know, etching and, and, and wheel protection and tire and rim and all these extra fees and crap to try and fabricate more profit for that dealership and endure this crazy experience where multiple levels of managers are coming out to try and close them on that deal. So you got to buy today. What if we do this? What if we do that? What if we give you more money for your trade? And the guy's like, holy crap, this is crazy high stress. I think I'm just going to order the Tesla on my phone. And what happens? Well, by that salesperson opening their mouth and saying, look, Mr. Customer, isn't it great that, that you can charge your, your Silverado EV at the Tesla chargers? Well, what did that do? That got the customer thinking Tesla. Oh, well, if Tesla's chargers are so good, aren't their vehicles any good? Oh, wait, oh, you mean I can get faster and cheaper charging as well with the Tesla vehicle? Because now I'm using a Tesla vehicle on the Tesla network. And you see how it starts to snowball? So I think while there's going to be certain aspects that are good. Listen, if you do end up buying that GM electric vehicle, you know, the the Cadillac Lyric or the, the Hummer EV or whatever. Great. Yes, you're going to have access to way more chargers. However... I believe that from the retail standpoint, these OEMs are going to give credence, give um, a nod, as it were, to Tesla. And the customers are going to see that. Well, why is GM partnering with Tesla? Well, maybe I should be looking at Tesla too, if they're that good. And so away they go and they buy a Cybertruck or they buy a Model Y. So those are my thoughts on the effect of this partnership. And we haven't even spoken about the fact that there will be more partnerships in the future. You're going to see legacy OEMs have no choice but to partner with Tesla on things like autonomy, drivetrains, battery packs, and energy solutions. You're going to see it. It's all going to come down the pipe. And these legacy automotive companies, whichever ones even survive the decade, are literally going to be f shells of what they were. They're, the, Tesla's going to engineer the entire underneath of it, the software, the hardware, whatever. And these guys are basically going to design the shell that goes on top of it and market the experience, the visceral feeling of owning that vehicle and market how you're going to feel when you have this whatever the heck uh, legacy vehicle that's powered by Tesla, batteries by Tesla, charge it with Tesla. 
But the reality is, is that a lot of these people are going to end up just going and buying the Tesla. So it's not looking very good for legacy automotive dealerships. Anyways, those are my thoughts. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.